Fantastic, guys. Okay, so day 10 of our second series, and it's going to be a little bit more of a stretch-based class. So just make sure you've got your mat laid out, that you've got your sarong and your pillows or whatever supports you actually need for yourself. Have them on hand. And we're going to start lying on our backs, and you're going to have your knees bent, and you're going to take your feet slightly wider than your hips, and then let your knees collapse together so that they're almost supporting each other. You shouldn't have to work here. And then just move your hips and your pelvis around, lengthen your spine, decide if you would like to put a cushion underneath your head, you can as well. And you're going to take one hand onto your lower belly, relax the elbow down, and put your other hand just onto your chest or just sort of close to your middle of your chest where your heart is. Tuck your chin in slightly and then just make yourself completely relaxed into this position here. And if you would like to, you can close your eyes or you can just let your gaze soften slightly. And you can start slowing your breath down. So it doesn't matter if you're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth or in through the nose and out through the nose. Whatever feels most comfortable for you. Just start to notice the lift of your chest and maybe a gentle lift of your belly as you inhale. And then notice as you breathe out how your belly softens underneath your hand and how your rib drops down slightly. Become aware of any areas of your body that you are holding tension. And maybe you need to shift your body slightly in order to relax or maybe you just have to use your mind to allow your body to soften and release. And as you breathe in and out, become aware of the movement of your spine. So the first movement you may notice is around your thoracic spine. And that's where the ribs attach. So start to notice the movement of that middle area of your back on the floor underneath you. And start to notice that there is a little ripple effect, almost like a wave that travels down your spine towards your lower back, your sacrum and your pelvis. And that same wave could perhaps be traveling up your spine towards your neck, your cervical spine, and towards the base of your skull and the back of your head that's resting on the floor. Taking just a few more moments here to connect into your breath, to connect into your physical body, and perhaps to start to notice your energy. Taking one more deep breath in, nice long exhale. And in your own time, gently blink your eyes open. Just let the daylight peep in. And now move both your hands down onto your lower belly. Just start to walk the feet a little closer in towards each other. Let your knees open slightly. So now your knees and feet are hip distance apart. And 
then use your feet to push into the ground to tilt the hips back and then relax your feet and just let your lower back and your pelvis roll back to where they started. And again, a little push with the feet. So there is absolutely no work happening in the lower tummy. There's no work happening with the bum cheeks. As you do a little push and then a little release, or maybe even you can pull with your feet, that is starting to create a slight tilt through the pelvis and an imprint into the lumbar spine. Taking just a few more moments here. Very soft, gentle warm up. And then let your pelvis settle back to its neutral place. Start to bring your right knee up. Just interlock your hands above your knee. Let your knee come in towards you. And maybe you want to actually lengthen your spine out a little bit. You might need to wiggle with your head up. Just draw that knee in slightly. And then slip your hands behind the knee, flexing your foot. Breathe out as you start reaching that heel up towards the sky. And inhale and let it release. And again, exhale. And again, it doesn't matter if your leg straightens completely or not. As much as possible, try to keep the back of your pelvis to the floor. Try to keep your head and shoulders nice and easy on the floor. And then start moving your leg into your stretch. Let's do one more time. Reach up and then bend your knee. Relax your foot and just hug your knee in and just circle your ankle just a few times one way and then change direction and circle your ankle the other way. And then bringing your foot back to neutral. Keep your leg where it is. Remember I told you to have a scarf or a towel or something like that that you can use. You're gonna take it now. You're going to loop it around the back of your leg and you want to bring it right up to where the top of the femur is, the top of the thigh bone. So it's gonna be wrapped quite low around the hip and you're going to hold onto it quite securely. Now, on your breath out, stretch your leg out and just let your foot come all the way down to the floor and then bring your leg all the way up. Now, as you stretch the leg out, pull on the sarong, pull on your towel up towards your right shoulder and then release. We're gonna do just a few more times. So this is that Dawn method that I was talking about. Now, usually the Dawn practitioner would be doing this adjustment with their hands, holding onto the head of the femur and stretching the leg out. But this is the maintenance program that you can do for yourself at home. And so you're using the strap to secure the pelvis. Let's do one more time. Pulling on the sarong or the strap as you stretch the leg out and then release in. And now you're going to take that strap all the way off, put it to the side, placing your foot down, and then bring your left knee up towards you. Just hug it in for a second. Make any adjustments you need to your spine. Move your hands behind the left knee, flexing your foot. And now breathe out as you extend. And a little release. And again, extend. And a little release. And we're going to do just a few more. Try to keep your sacrum, your pelvis, your head and shoulders heavy on the ground as you do this. And we're going to do just one more time. Stretch out just as much as your flexibility will go. And then release. Relax the ankle and foot and then circle the ankle and foot. Just go one way and then change directions, maybe three or four circles, nice big movements. And then relax your foot, keep your leg where it is. And again, you take that strap, you take that sarong, 
you loop it around the top of the femur. You're going to hold on securely with your hands. Keep your head down. And now you're going to extend your leg out all the way down towards the floor and then bring that leg up nice and easy. Now make sure you've got the sarong in a comfortable place and you're gonna stretch your leg out and pull upwards at the same time, and then release the leg up. So what you're doing is you are holding the hip and the sacrum securely in one place, and the movement of your leg away from you is actually what's realigning your pelvis if it's out. So, this Dorn Method and Royce Massage course, I did with a woman in Cape Town a few years ago, Anna Hagen, and she's now based back in Germany. And it's probably one of the most useful courses I've done, just purely for alignment, so that when we go into a Pilates or a yoga class, you make sure that you're actually working in a balanced way. And bring your leg up, hold it, and you can slip the sarong or the strap off, place it to the side, knees bent, feet on the ground, and now we're just going to roll the hips up. Guys, if you've got something under your head, just take it out for a moment. Tilt your hips and roll up into a bridge position. So you can feel a lovely squeeze from the bum cheeks here. And then you're going to ripple down through the spine, imprint, Release, now stay here. Bring your knees and your feet together. Put your hands on your pelvis, on your lower belly. Make sure that you don't tip your pelvis. Start squeezing your knees together. So as you squeeze your knees together, guys, if you need a pad between your knees, if this is sore, then put something between your knees. But can you feel the inner thighs working now? So as you squeeze, if there's any misalignment at the pubic bone, this will help realign you. And relax, separate the knees and feet to hip distance again, arms down beside you, and we're going to tilt the hips, and again, roll up into a bridge position, and this is giving the gluteals an opportunity to help stabilize everything that has been brought back into alignment now. And then start rippling down through the spine, imprint into the lower back, and release at the bottom. Nicely done. So guys, pick up your sarong or your belt again, and you're going to pick up your right foot, loop it over the top, of the foot and then you're just going to extend your leg up as straight as you can manage and you're giving yourself just a little bit of support here get your elbows onto the ground get your pelvis and your lower back in a happy place and let's do a little bit of internal external rotation from the hip joint so you're getting that gliding action for those three hamstrings muscles that are at the back of the leg. So if you were to look up at your, your foot right now, it's almost like your foot is polishing the ceiling. So you're rotating the foot in and out, but that movement is actually coming from the top of the thigh bone. And bring your leg just back to center. Now, you might need to move your hands down the strap a little bit, Start to open your right leg to the right and counterbalance the movement by taking your left knee out to the side. You can slide the strap on your foot as you need, but can you feel now that you're getting a stretch into the inner thigh muscle on the right side? Lift your head up for a moment and look at your pelvis. If you had a cappuccino balanced on your lower tummy right now, is it spinning? You want to keep the cappuccino balanced as possible. Now guys, for those of you that are super flexible, why don't you hold the strap with your left hand and bring that left hand up overhead? And can you feel how your toe gets pulled up towards your head? Stay here for just a few more seconds. And now you're going to bring your left elbow back down if it was lifted. 
and then slowly bring both legs all the way back up towards the ceiling. Bend the top knee. Now turn the knee out so that you can cross your ankle over and you can remove the strap if you want. Place it down beside you. Hands onto the front of your pelvis. Breathe out as you lift the left leg and release it down. And again, lifting the leg and releasing it down. So as you bring that left foot up off the floor, can you feel that it starts to give you a little stretch around the right hip? Make sure that your lower back feels okay with this. Lift up now, hold it there. Take your hands and wrap them around the left thigh. And then you're just gonna settle back into a little bit of a gluteal stretch. See if you can get your head and shoulders down. Guys, if you need a pillow under your head, go for it. And then do a gentle rocking side to side with your hips. Start to massage up that stretch on the right deep gluteal. And we're gonna take just one more time. And now stay here, let go and let your foot come all the way down. Slide your right thigh over the left thigh. Take your hands a little bit out to the side, palms up or palms down, and start rolling your knees to the left and look over your right shoulder and then stay here for a moment and breathe into the stretch. Make any adjustments you need to your hips and knees. If you need a bolster underneath your knees to support them, then do so. Make sure that you can breathe. And then just notice as you stay here and breathe that your body starts to soften into this rotation a little bit more. Long, expansive breath in and breath out. And in your own time, start to pull both legs all the way back to the center. Use the obliques to come all the way back. And then you're going to uncross and place that right foot all the way down. Take your strap, picking up your left leg, loop it over the foot, and then start making your way up into a little bit of a hamstring stretch. Make sure your elbows are down, pelvis is grounded, and we're going to do that little external internal rotation from the top of the thigh bone. So getting that little hamstring glide. If you look up at your foot, you want to feel like you're polishing a circle on the ceiling above you. Taking just a few more rounds. Keep breathing. And then bring your leg to center. Start opening your left leg to the left. Counterbalance by opening the right leg to the right and adjust the strap as you need as you take the leg to the side. Lift your head up. Take a look at your pelvis. Make sure that you can balance a cappuccino without spilling the foam. And then, if you want an extra stretch, not everybody needs it, by the way, you can take your right hand, draw your hand up overhead so you get an increased pull on that inner thigh. Keep breathing. And then bring your elbow back down. Make sure that you're anchored. Bringing both legs all the way back up. Bending your top knee, crossing your ankle over. You can remove the strap if you want. And then placing your hands onto the front of your pelvis and breathe out as you lift the right leg and releasing it down. Feel the connection into your lower belly and into the hip flexors as you do this movement. That's what's going to make sure that your lower back feels secure, yeah? One more time. Now hold it here. Lift your head. 
Wrap your hands around your right thigh and then lower yourself back into your stretch. Give yourself a support under your head if you need. And then maybe do that little rocking from side to side. So you just start to work the deep muscles of the hip to allow them to release a little bit more. And coming to center on your breath, release, placing that foot down, cross your left thigh over, taking your hands out a little bit, palms up or palms down, knees roll to the right, head looks to the left, and coming into that lovely twist and rotation of the spine. Settle into a position that you know you can stay in for a few breaths. Support yourself wherever you need. Taking one more deep breath in. Long exhale. And on your next breath, use the abdominals to draw yourself all the way back to the center, pulling all the way back, and then uncross and placing both feet all the way down. So you can keep your arms nice and wide, knees and feet slightly apart. On your breath, roll your hips all the way up towards the sky. Just hold it there for a moment. Feel the opening along the front line of your body. Soften through the chest and then roll down. Placing each vertebra. Take your time, absolutely no reason to rush. And release your pelvis at the bottom. Bringing both hands straight up towards the sky. Palms of the hands facing each other and we start to scissor. Let's get a little bit of movement around the shoulders. And based on if you're right-handed or left-handed, maybe you've had some kind of trauma or injury to one side, just notice how the right side feels. What is your range? Notice how the left side feels. And what is your range? And then bring your awareness to your scapula, your shoulder blades, gliding along your ribcage underneath you. Let them move. Taking two more. One more. And now bring both hands up. You're going to bend the elbows and you're going to hold on with your hands to each elbow. You're going to gently push your forearms towards the ceiling. So you might feel that your scapula glide out a little bit. And then just start rocking from side to side on your ribs. It doesn't matter if your head is tilting a little bit or your chin is poking up. It doesn't matter if your hips move a little bit. Bring your awareness and your focus to your thoracic spine. And can you visualize that it's round like a barrel? And you're just rolling the barrel softly from side to side. And then come back to the center, relax your shoulders, reach up through the fingertips once again, settle yourself, and now repeat the arm scissors. And just notice if there's any change in your range. Maybe it feels different. Usually I feel that my back has almost melted. I almost feel like I've got more contact to the floor. And that's just on my own spine because I hold a little bit of tension between the shoulder blades there. Bring both hands straight up. Interlock the fingers. Lift your head so you can place your hands just underneath your occipital bone and again, Wiggle your spine, give yourself a little traction stretch, 
And then let your head rest and bring your elbows up as high as you can. So you're always cupping your head with your arms. You're going to let your chin come in and on your breath, curl your spine forward, keeping the elbows tucked in. So you're actually focusing on getting a stretch along the back of your neck and your upper back. And then release down, place yourself and then hold it here. Keep the elbows close. Breathe out as you roll forward and feeling the release along the back line of your body. And then gently down you go. Guys, this should feel good. This shouldn't feel sore. Nod your chin and breathe as you curl forward, feeling that lovely stretch along the back of the body. And then Gently down you go. And then open your elbows just so you can see them in your periphery. And let's repeat that movement. Breathe out as you round forward. And then release back. So I want you to notice something here. You're doing a chest lift. So yes, your abs are working. But can you feel right now with the release work that we've done on the back of the body? But it feels quite easy. Our mental focus is on releasing the back and floating down. Releasing the back and floating down. One more time. Releasing the back and floating down. And then press the elbows back. Let your shoulders stretch, let your ribs pop up. So it's just a lovely way to feel the abdominal work in a slightly different way. And then relax your chest, bring your hands out, bring one knee up, hug it in. Bring the other knee up, hug it in. Rock a little bit from side to side. And then settle in the middle, put one hand on top of each knee and start to circle the knees away from each other and around. So stirring the clouds. Mobilize the hips. Make it as big or as small as it feels good for you and then change direction and go the other way. So this is a lovely movement from gyrokinesis. Stir the clouds. One more, and then bring yourself to center. Take your hands behind your thighs. You're going to tuck yourself into a tight little ball shape, and then using your feet, start picking your legs and start rolling on your spine. And then find the point where you can kick your legs enough that you come up to balance, and then I want you to hold that balanced position for a second. Taking one more breath in and out, and then exhale, and you're going to place the feet all the way down. Good, so move back a little bit so that your legs are out nice and long. Have your legs just slightly separated, and you can support yourself if you need, okay? I want you to curl the toes back towards you, and then I want you to push the pads of your feet forward, and then curl the toes over, and then lift the toes up, and then pull your feet back. And again, push through the balls of the feet and then curl the toes, pull the toes back, and then push the heels away from you. And let's just do two more. So we're being very conscious of the movement through the ankle joints and then the movement through the actual foot itself. Those are the intrinsic muscles of the feet that are working there. And for those of us that don't exercise our feet very often, like we cramp here sometimes, eh? Mm -hmm. And point, pull, and releasing all the way up. And now just give your legs a little bit of a shake. Bring your knees and feet slightly together, and then start walking your hands forward until you can feel that you can relax over completely. Now, if you want to, what you could do here is even put like a pillow on your knee if you wanted to raise your head down or you could stack some pillows. Or if you're comfortable just having your head hanging in the air there, that's absolutely fine as well. Do a little bit of a twist of the shoulders 
just so that you start to get a little bit of a release around the mid there. And then stay nice and still and just notice if you're able to stretch a little bit further. On your next breath, walk both your hands over to the right side of your body. So both hands will be on the right side. You can feel the shoulders are turning, but you're not forcing it. And now you're going to point one foot and flex the other, point the other foot and flex the other. So you're alternating. And with that little rotation of the body, you're going to start to find a little bit of a fascial release. Keep breathing. Don't force. And then let your ankles stay still. And just notice if you can perhaps sink a little bit deeper on that side. Take your time as you walk your hands over to the left side. So both hands move over to the left, just getting the shoulders in a comfy place. And then once again, you point one foot and flex the other, and then point the other foot and flex the other. So this movement of the ankles and feet, by the way, is called the circulation drill. So you're actually pumping blood back towards the heart. There's this big net of fascia, connective tissue around the calf muscles that are helping us with the pumping of the heart, or the blood, sorry and relaxing the feet and then see if you can just sink a little bit deeper towards that stretch bringing one hand to the right side one hand to the left side of your legs and once again just relax over has your body released a little bit more maybe yes maybe no taking a nice easy breath in and then exhale, walking your hands all the way back up as you lift up nice and tall. You're going to bend both your knees, come and sit a little bit closer towards your feet, hook your hands around your knees, and then use your arms to help yourself sit up straight. Curl the tail under and start rolling back. Go back as far as you can. Hopefully you can straighten the arms and just hang into the stretch for a moment. And then bend your elbows and actively pull up and then lift up nice and tall. And again, curl under. Rolling back as far as you can go. And then pull, lift up, and sit up nice and tall. Two more times, draw the tail under, rolling back, and again, bend the elbows, lift up. Last time, draw the tail under, scoop back, take a lovely deep breath in, and then exhale, pull, 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 lifting all the way up. And then sit cross leg. It doesn't matter which leg is in front. If you want to put a pillow underneath your bum, you can. I'm going to turn so that I'm facing towards you guys. So you're just going to take your right elbow. You, well, I'll do my image. Right elbow and put it underneath the left elbow. So you might already be getting a stretch here. If you're super duper tight or men, you've got broader shoulders you might actually want to hold onto a strap here so that you've got some support, okay? Give yourself that option. But if you are able, you can bring the hands a little closer, or maybe you can even wrap the hands around so you're coming into a little bit of a bind with the hands. And you're going to have your chin tucked in very slightly, and think of reaching your fingertips up towards the ceiling as you're keeping your shoulders as relaxed and level as possible. And then maybe you want to just turn your head gently from side to side. It's a small movement, just a very tiny movement. I'll sit a little bit on a diagonal so you can see what I'm doing with my head. And then come back to the center. Take your time as you unwind your hands, and then just let your hands settle. Roll the shoulders back and around, and then let's try the other side. So now you're going to take your left hand, hook it under, 
if you need to hold on to your strap. Give yourself that support. Otherwise, bring the hands closer. Maybe you can bind your hands, that's it. And guys, anybody who's been struggling with shoulder issues, just make sure that you monitor what's happening on each side. Shin in slightly, reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Breathing into it. And then do you want to do a little turn with your head from side to side? So this can be quite an intense stretch for the upper trapezius muscles, the levator scapular muscles, and also for those muscles between the shoulder blades called the rhomboids. You might feel this. And then bring your head back to center. Unwind your hands. Take a moment to just let your hands settle on your knees. And then roll the shoulders back. Open your eyes if they're closed. And now, Let's go a little bit from side to side, okay? Everybody knows by now how much I love lateral flexion of the spine. I think we get such benefits from this, especially if we've been sitting for extended periods and the whole sideline of the body likes to shorten up here. So it's just a nice gentle side to side. And one more time each way. Come all the way back up. And now you're going to lie on your right side. So I'm going to do a mirror image for you. So you're going to lie on your right side so that your left leg is on top. If you need this to wrap around your foot for the quadriceps stretch, then use your strap. Otherwise, grab onto your ankle or your foot with the top hand. Rest your head down. It's really important here that you do a little bit of a tilt with the pelvis so that you're going into a posterior tuck and that is what opens up this hip flexor joint. Now guys, it doesn't matter if your leg is lifting a bit or if you feel that you need to do that. Based on what's happening with your leg alignment and muscle development, you might have to adjust your leg position so that your kneecap feels happy here. And that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to get you to change it. So I want you to stay here and breathe for just a few moments. Getting that lovely release down the front of the thigh. And then on your next breath, just releasing your foot. And you're going to have both knees just a little bit bent in front of you. Overlap the knees, overlap the feet. Feel that little bit of a lift on the bottom oblique. And now put your fingertips on the floor to help you balance. Start lifting the top knee up, keeping the pelvis stable, and then lower the knee down. So this is called the clam. Yeah, for obvious reasons, it looks like a little clamshell opening. So as you open and close the knee, keeping the feet together for now, because keeping the feet together is going to contain the range of movement and it's going to really make you isolate that hip socket. So we're just going to do a few more here, and then I'm going to give you just a little bit of a challenge. Waking up those muscles around the deep hip one more time. Keep that laid through the crown of your head. Now, as you open the knee, lift both your feet. So both your feet come up and the bottom leg is actually supporting the top leg. And then everything comes down at the same time. So you're opening the clam, but you are increasing the range by pushing up with the underneath foot and releasing it down. Good, now keep going at your own pace. So you can work quickly or slowly. You can make it a small movement or a big movement. The point is, do you have control over your movements? Are you able to stabilize through the lumbar spine and the pelvis? Now we're just gonna take a few more. Let's take two more here. Hopefully you're starting to feel something working around the gluteals. Getting something there, Jules? Yep. Great. One more time, open the clam, lift the feet now, stay here. Keep everything stable, keep the knee where it is, and see if you can straighten the top leg. And then 
bend the top knee, bringing the feet together, the clam is still open. Abs. Extend the top leg. And bend. And let's do two more. Can you feel the bum cheeks firing up? Extend. And bend. One more time. Let's go. And extend. Reach through the crown of your head. And bend. Pause for a moment. Can you open the crown a little more? And everything comes down. Lovely. If the tushies are rough, they work hard. Bring your knees up a little bit higher as if you're sitting in a chair. Cradle the back of your neck. Your left hand reaches forward and let's do one thoracic rotation. Lift your arm, look up, and then open up across the chest. Oh, take yourself back into that lovely stretch. If you need to let your hips and knees move, then please do so. We're gonna stay here for three breaths in and out. Make sure it feels good. You can feel the benefits of this release opening across the heart, the chest, and the arm. And on your next breath, coming all the way up, lift your arm, roll the chest forward, let the knees slide forward, coming all the way up. Push yourself up with your left hand, and coming onto your elbow. You're going to have your knees slightly bent. You can overlap the feet or put one in front. Taking your left hand, we reach up as we open that arm line and then breathe out and almost think of threading the needle through just as much as you can manage. And again, inhale, open. And breathe out, thread the needle through. Two more times. So you're letting your head and your hips follow your spine, guys. Don't force your hips and head where they don't want to go. Let them move with you. One more time. And now thread the needle through, and if possible, can you let your forearm rest to the ground? You can let your knees and hips slide if you need to. Relaxing your neck. Taking one more breath in and out. And then exhale, unwind, reaching the arm up, placing your fingertips to the ground so that you can push yourself up, spin yourself over, and we are on the other side. So now you guys are gonna be lying on your left side with your right leg in the air. Both knees bent, support your head. We're gonna start with a quadriceps stretch. So remember if you need the strap around your foot, you can. And then once you've got a hold of your foot, get your spine in a nice lengthened position. Do a tuck with your pelvis. Don't force your knee where it doesn't want to go. Figure it out so that it works for you. And then we just stay here for a few moments and breathe. So we're getting that wonderful opening along the front of the hip. A few more moments. And on your next breath, we're going to release. Overlap one knee on top of the other, feet on top of the other, fingertips to the ground. And we're going into our clam. So just lifting the knee up to start off with. Your feet are staying connected to the floor for this first bit. And all you're doing here is getting your brain to recognize the movement of the hip socket. You're not letting your lumbar spine move. So remind yourself to connect those bottom obliques as you work here. Taking just a few more. Finding your range. Guys, remember if your neck is sore, you can turn your head or you use your fingers up near your neck to find the pressure points and give yourself a little bit of a release. So we're going to do just one more time. And now when you're ready, let's add the lift of the feet. So now we are increasing the range of movement. Remember that when you lift that knee up, you're aiming it up to the ceiling, not to your body. So don't let your knees come towards your shoulders. 
aiming your knee up towards the ceiling. Very nice. Taking just a few more. Find the stability through your torso. We've got two. And now on this last one, freeze and hold it right there. Start to extend the top leg, working from the knee joint, and then bend the knee so that your feet come together. You're still in your clam position. Extend the top leg, reach. And then bend the knee, let it come down. Taking just a few more, focus on your core stability. Let the work come from the hip, extending the knee, there's quadriceps. And then hold it, feet together. Can you open the clam a little bit more? And releasing it down. Nicely done, guys. Bring your knees up, sitting in a chair, holding the back of your neck, right hand comes forward. Lift your arm, take yourself all the way back into your thoracic rotation, Settle into your stretch and we breathe. Three lovely breaths in and out. And then in your own time, lifting your arm, rolling shoulders, chest, hips, and knees all the way to the front. Taking that right hand, pushing onto the ground so you can come up onto your elbow. Both knees are a little bit bent. You can split the if two. Your right arm comes up and reaches back and open, and then thread the needle through just as much as your spine allows. And again, reach back. So guys, the reality is that Everybody has slightly different mobility and range through the spine, different restrictions of their muscles. So you might be moving a lot further than me, or you might be moving a lot less than me, and it doesn't matter. You need to explore your range. And I'll thread the needle through to where you can hold it. If you can, rest your forearm to the ground. Maybe you need to put a pillow there, or maybe you just need to stay on your hand. That's absolutely fine. Relax the back of your neck. Taking one more breath in and out. And then exhale, release. Unwind your arm to come up. And then bring your hand down and push up so you can turn onto all fours. So, wrists below shoulders, knees below hips, and let's go into a little bit of a cat stretch. Rounding your spine, stay here for a moment, moving your hips back, stay here for a moment, coming forward, stay here, and then lengthen your spine and maybe go to a little bit of extension for yourself. And again, round the spine, stay here, moving your hips back, enjoy that stretch, coming forward, and then lengthen the spine, maybe lift your tail, lift your heart, and lift your gaze. And taking one more round, round, press back, come forward, Lengthen the spine, move towards extension, and then return to a neutral position here. So if you feel that you need to come forward on the mat, you can move forward a little bit. Reach back with one foot and tuck the toes under. Reach back with the other foot, tuck the toes under. And we're just going to hold our plank position here for a moment. Let your knees hinge down to the ground so you have a long base. Let your feet relax out. Now firm up your bum, firm up your abs, and slowly bend your elbows and come down to lie flat on your tummy. So don't leave your bum in the air. Bring your hips with you. Come all the way down. Now stay here with your elbows lifting up off the mat. 
Your hands are on the floor and your legs are extended long. Inhale as you lift up into a little baby cobra. And exhale as you release down. Inhale as you come up and feel how your heart lifts. And exhale and release. Now keep going at your own pace. And I want you to notice that it feels different when we change our mental focus. Yes, you're using your back muscles, but can you feel how easy it is because you're bringing your mental focus to opening the underside of your body. Feel how your lungs inflate to lift you up. Feel how your heart reaches forward. And we're gonna do just one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Now, press firmly into your hands as you come up onto your knees. Press up. Bring your knees forward underneath you. Tucking your toes under, we're going to go into a downward facing dog or an inverted V, whatever you would like to call it. Please start with your knees bent and then focus on pushing one heel to the ground and then pushing your other heel to the ground. Really getting that release through the calf muscles, the Achilles tendons. Few more rounds. And then push both heels towards the ground. It doesn't matter if your knees are bent or straight. And now do the wagging of your tail from side to side. Just feel how your hips move gently side to side. And then bringing your pelvis to the center. Push away from your hands just a little bit more. Create that extra stretch. And then soften your knees and walk your feet halfway forward. Just halfway, and then line up your toes with each other. Start to walk your hands backwards to your feet. Go onto your fingertips if you need, and pause there. Make sure that you have your heels flat to the ground, and then take a moment to shake your head no, and then nod your head yes, and then let's do a bending of both knees and a straightening of both knees as much as you can. Bending the knees and straighten. Taking one more time. Let your knees soften. Walk your hands just onto the front of your ankles relaxing the back of your neck, and then let your arms go. And then let's draw little circles with the arms in the air. Change direction, draw little circles the other way. Let your arms hang nice and heavy. Take a breath in. Exhale, unraveling your spine. Taking your time as you come all the way upright. Lifting tall through your spine, and then take a moment to roll the shoulders back and around. Letting your arms hang beside you. I'm just going to turn to face towards you. Taking the right arm, sweeping it out to the side, bringing your arm up and over. Feel your ribs release, then push your hip to the side if that feels okay for your back. Bring your hips in and then lift the ribs, lift the arm, and your arm comes down beside you. And now, left arm, your arm comes over, let the ribs release, and then can you push your hip a little to the side, come back with the hip, and let your ribs return. Let's do that one more time on each side. So the right arm, overhead, ribs, and then pushing the hips, Bring your hips in, 
and release your rib cage. One more time. And just breathe. Finding your range. Come back and release. Stay here. Roll the shoulders back. I'm going to turn around so you can see me. You're going to interlock your hands behind your back. And now move your hands over to the right side of your body. So your hands are over towards the right. You might already feel a little bit of a stretch there, but if you want to increase it, tilt your right ear towards your right shoulder. And just feeling that gentle pull down the left side of your neck. Let your head come back up. Release your hands. Move your fist over to the left side. And again, yeah. So, I mean, if that's enough of a stretch, you stay there. No, that's your tight side, then, Jules. All right. And then you can tilt your head over towards the left just to increase it. Don't force. Make sure that you can breathe. And then allow your head to come up. Bring your hands all the way down, unclasp your hands. Let's take one deep breath in, reach all the way up, touching your fingertips. Exhale, open your arms, nod your chin, and just let your body fold over into our final roll down. And as you come all the way over, we're just gonna pause at the bottom. Let yourself soften, release, especially through the back of the neck. Breathe in. Exhale. Roll back up into standing. Remember to use your abdominals, guys. And when you root into your feet, you can start to activate up the back line of your body as well as you come all the way upright. And then standing here, closing your eyes. Put one hand on your lower tummy. Put one hand in the middle of your chest, just over your heart. And just bring yourself to your breath. Feeling the lift, the rise, the softening around your chest and your belly as you inhale. And feeling the movement of your breath and in your hands as you exhale. Keeping your hands where they are. Feeling your body in space. Noticing every muscle that has been activated, woken up, released. Taking a moment to notice your energy. Keeping your eyes closed. Just allowing your hands to relax down beside your body. Slowly blinking your eyes open. And just giving your hands and wrists a little bit of a shake. Maybe giving your ankles and your feet a little bit of a shake. Very nicely done, guys. Are you okay with everything that we did? Thank you, Rachel. Nice gentle class today. Okay. I think it's a good way to have a Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah.